and what little remained of government's power to regulate children's advertising would be dealt a final, fatal blow in the early 1980s. Government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. In the 1980s, this country was in a situation of falling in love with the market, thinking that the market was the solution to everything, and of deregulating industry. For those of you with television stations, I have an announcement. As you know, I've never liked big government, and I think you would agree there's no reason to substitute the judgment of Washington bureaucrats for that of professional broadcasters. By 1984, the Reagan administration had completely deregulated children's television. All bets were now off. Corporations now realized that Congress was not going to do anything to restrict their power to marketing to children, and they now actually had more power. And lo and behold, a lot of really smart marketers discovered children as a huge market. In the decades prior to deregulation, kids' consumer spending increased at a modest rate of roughly 4% a year. Since deregulation, it's grown a remarkable 35% every year, from $4.2 billion in 1984 to $40 billion today, an 852% increase. Deregulation really opened the floodgates for a kind of marketing to children that uh, never existed before the mid-1980s. And the masters of the universe! Suddenly, it became okay to create a television program for the sole purpose of selling a toy. No one can stop the spike-studded armor of the mighty Spike-or! Not even me, you muscle-bell porcupine! Not even you, man And sure enough, in the year immediately following the congressional action, the ten best-selling toys were all based on kids' television shows. It was the beginning of a new era for childhood marketing. 